just a little history with this planer. So I've had it over two, two years, five months or so. And I've never been rough with it. Uh, I've never uh, made it struggle. I've never gummed it up. I've changed blades out, even though I don't think the blades needed to be changed out based on how much I use it. Most of the time it's pretty uh, smooth planing. Take a little bit off at a time. I don't go excessive with it. And then uh, today I was running some pine through it and I ran my piece through and shut it off and then I turned it back on and as I turned it back on I could tell and it was weird because it, I had uh, hearing protection on and I can really hear it with the hearing protection on but couldn't really hear it if I didn't have the hearing protection on so it was pronounced with the hearing protection on but it had a uh, it went from the the normal high pitched noise and then you could tell it was slowing down or had the sound of slowing down and then what would happen is the circuit breaker on it would pop and it would shut off and then I also noticed a slight plastic type smell no smoke I waited a little bit and then uh, pushed the button back in and uh, pulled the red trigger to uh, start it back up did the same exact thing so then what I did was okay there must be a bigger problem. It's not that it's not getting the correct amperage or uh, popping a circuit in the, uh, the house. What I ended up doing was uh, I started removing uh, different panels, just checking to see if anything's jammed up. I raised the planer all the way up so that I could see as much as I could up inside of it to see if anything was gummed or blocking I've, I've already removed some parts in order to make it uh, quicker to show um, the exhaust port's been removed this top cover has been removed and then also this has been removed as well and I also removed this portion here there's a clip here uh, cross tip cross tip and then there's two more clips similar to this one to remove this which when you take this off reveals the fan blades off the motor that kick the chips out as it uh, planes whatever you're putting through it i do not see anything in here of course this the blade the blades do not uh, turn unless the cover's on because the cover pushes on that part right there which unlocks the blade uh, attachment i also removed this cover and did not see anything I also removed this cover over here did not see anything then I put everything back together and tested it again except this time it started it was going you could tell it was getting ready to die and all of a sudden it just went clunk and a spark I can't say with 100% certainty um, I don't I don't think it came out of the exhaust port. I actually think it came out of here. So here we go again. I'm going to apply power to it to see what it does. I haven't tightened these screws down. I only put this back on because there is a safety switch right here. And underneath the lid right there, that piece right 
there pushes into there. To be on the safe side. I also have the uh, shield already installed back on it, so everything should be good to test it unless it explodes on me. So here we go once again. Circuit breaker, button pushed in, and that didn't trip the breaker, but you can hear it. It's like jammed. So I need to figure out what is jamming it up. Not too bad. Alright, all four bolts out of the motor. It's still going to feel like something's holding the motor on, but it's basically just a guide pin that's holding it in. So when you lift it up, you'll see a guide pin here and a guide pin here that uh, make sure you uh, put it in properly. Now that I have the motor completely out, I need to remove the uh, fan. And this is a half inch nut and I'm using an impact wrench because uh, I already tried it with a ratchet and it was very difficult to turn off turn to get it off so the impact wrench worked really well be really careful with these little uh, clips that are on here because some of them look like they'll come right off but maybe not there are three Phillips screws here and just be aware that these are going to be completely covered in uh, dust or uh, sawdust uh, so you have to clean them up a little bit before you use a screwdriver but um, so I clean it up and again these screws that are in here are super super loose and I didn't I didn't have to put I mean no no issue whatsoever loosen it up no, they, they seem to have just been sitting in there but it's uh, quite possible that since they're on a motor, they came loose over the last uh, two years, five months. So that's the other half of the fan shroud. plate needs to come off so this ground is going to hold this plate on still so I'm going to take that off and then these four Phillips screws that are on there. grounding wire is disconnected I put the screw back here just to make sure I don't lose it not that that ever happens and I'm going to remove all four of these screws and these also have washers on them Alright, so those four screws out, plate is loose. I'm um, going to remove the caps on the brushes. These are spring loaded. You can see uh, deep grooves in it like a little bit of arcing on this side don't look too bad
This one pretty much looks the same. You can see some deep striations on here. So this is where it definitely gets pretty interesting and I can tell right from the get-go that uh, definitely something wrong with the motor because there are like pieces all over the place inside like this piece right here that looks all burnt up you just see all kinds of stuff bent pieces so I'll take this out and see what it looks like. All three of these Phillips screws for the electric cable that goes inside the motor. And then remove this plastic cap that holds it in place. This will allow me to pass this through when I need to. I am sure that there are other ways to get this uh, pulley wheel off. In order to get this off, I put a 10 inch crescent wrench here. Uh, the 10 inch crescent wrench offers a lot more leverage uh, and it's wedged against the table while I hold the motor in place and then use the channel locks to get this off. And you do have to take it off because it won't pass through the motor cover. And surprisingly, the motor cover is plastic. So now the moment of truth. Um, this was the piece that was already sit inside of it when I first open it and it looks like a, a lot of heat was involved in this it looks like a plastic that uh, fell out got it, everything loosened up on this center portion Here were the adhesive that they use. Seems to be all broken up and chipped. Looks like there's some kind of split here. It's like a crack. But yeah, there's, uh, there's another one there. So I don't know if this uh, this adhesive material that they use between, maybe because it was getting hot, was breaking off. It's a little disappointing to see that the motor looks like this. But at the same time, I'm uh, kind of glad that after all that work to get to this point, that it is in fact the motor that's damaged. And uh, once I get this apart, we'll be able to, de to determine exactly uh, what is going on inside. There are two Phillips screws right here that uh, I'll remove in order to get this out. These are the two Phillips screws that were removed. And this is this part here. And you have to move wires out of the way in order to get this center piece out. Looking inside You can, you can see.
see like a it looks like the center piece was off center because it looks like there's a bunch of rubbing all along here on this side and then on this side it's on this upper portion down here uh, but you can see that uh, it got pretty hot because plastic pieces are melted. You can, you can see the buildup. There's a lot of, uh, it looks like some uh, sawdust may have gotten in it as well, which could have created the problem yeah this this plastic that's underneath here is charred up pretty good based on what I am seeing this here will need to be replaced and this portion as well will need to be replaced casing to the motor looks okay the wires that are inside here are both black and one would go there one would go there and then your power cable you have your uh, white and your black the black would connect here and the white would connect over here uh, good idea to take a good picture on where everything goes to make sure that you put it back together properly once I get the parts, and this uh, centerpiece is going to be a little fun uh, trying to get reconnected because you, you can see there's a connector here and a connector there, connector there, that connect into this piece, one right there and one right there. Uh, but these wires aren't even long enough, so uh, it's going to be interesting putting those back together.